The Last Patrol Radio Show is a program dedicated to my brothers and sisters who have and to those who are now serving America in the U.S. military, the police, and security, firefighters, and EMS. This is a Veterans to Veterans ministry. By God's grace, we're here to serve and to help bring the truth to you through the Word and the life of Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Ted Marshall. I served as a dog man, that is a canine handler, in the U.S. Air Force Security Police in the Vietnam War. I know that the bond we as veterans have is very special, and we can talk to each other. This program is for you and your family. Let us ask for guidance from our Lord to inspire and to hear from Him on how much He loves you. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 7. The Last Patrol radio program is a Talk to Vets ministry, hosting guests from the Christian veterans community and the caring and loving people who bring information, loving gratitude for all of you who are our nation's finest treasure. Here in the home of the brave, you are the brave in that home. You and I have a lot to share on subjects we can learn from. Using the Perfect Operations Planning Manual, the POPM, also known as the Bible. Heart to heart, vet to vet, patriot to patriot, welcome home. The Last Patrol is about realizing that we have a mission that we're being called to. Each of us has a special place in this patrol. We have and are now continuing a specialized training for this task and mission. This is a highly motivated and extremely skilled operations team with overpowering strength, courage, and leadership support. The air power as well, the universe knows none is awesome. The ground troops are all in the army of the Lord. We are God's warriors. Who can stand against us? Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Proverbs 3, 5, 6. Walk with us on the last patrol. Hi, this is Pastor Ted Marshall. Welcome to the last patrol radio show. Today, our own analysis by our resident um, analysis, <laughs> our man that can, uh, Aaron Bergman in the Bergman Report. Bergman uh, Report is going to be, of course, has uh, appeared. He's appeared on our radio show for the past several years. He's been on last patrol radio show. And I'm happy to inform, inform everybody out there that the Bergman Report will be a standalone show coming up uh, soon. And uh, if he lets me be on a show, I will. I'll, I'll talk. We'll talk back and forth. But uh, the important thing is that uh, we're, we're opening up another outlet here where a voice can be heard. And we'll be doing this in this 30-minute shows, and we'll be airing those uh, each week here on Veterans Radio Ministries and uh, WVRM here in Zephyr Hills. And uh, we thank you so much again for joining us, Aaron. we got a very interesting topic that we're going to be talking about the title of this topic and the title of this show is The False Majority. And Aaron, welcome back. And uh, I'm excited about what's going to be happening in the future with you on uh, helping uh, do your own radio program. As am I, Ted. As am I. It's, it's great to be back. And uh, specifically with regard to the false majority, um, what I'm referring to is the selling of a distorted reality on the part of the mass media. And the main tool, of course, they're attempting to use is social media in order to do this. Mm-hmm. And let me let me clarify what I'm what I'm getting at here. Um, fake news, as Trump coined it, or fake polls, fake headlines, fake everything, uh, by which I mean everything being slanted left. I'll give you a classic example. Um, every time I go on to Google, you know, it opens up uh, a set of headlines on Google News. And every single headline, without fail, if it's referring to a Republican or conservative, is vastly negative. If it's referring to anything remotely Democratic or leftist, it's completely positive. And the news is always bad for the Republicans, miraculously, and it's always good for the Democrats uh, going into the midterms, going into the hearings with Kavanaugh, going into all the news, all the news that's fit to print, as they used to say, Ted, is always incredibly positive for people of the leftist stance and always 
vastly negative and doom and gloom for the Republicans. Now, that's nothing new. That is not a cutting or an insightful analysis on my part in any way, shape, or form. However, what is new in this the age of social media is the attempt to depress and demoralize the true majority by convincing them that they are a minority, in fact, and nothing could be further from the truth. And the social media angle is important in this sense. Um, we've covered in some previous shows the laziness, ignorance, and outright stupidity and madness of the media during the past two years since uh, Trump was elected, that they, they, they've basically gone insane. I think it's safe to say that. And all pretense of objectivity has gone out the window. They don't even pretend to be objective anymore. Would you not agree? Absolutely. There is no objectivity. There is just agenda-driven. Right. And beyond agenda-driven, it's also social media-driven. Mm -hmm. We've got a wag. We've got a wag the dog scenario at work here, where basically the laziness component is coming into play, and they are using social media to allegedly reflect the pulse of the nation, and thus their news reporting. And obviously, Twitter is very, very left-wing, as is Facebook, for the most part, as is Google News, as evidenced by the headline example I gave you. And, and, and basically, these people are in an echo chamber. That, that, they're sort of like that old uh, Howdy Doody show with Buffalo Bill, where, where he had that clown, Clarabelle, with the horn that would honk the horn, you know, honk, 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 you know, to, right. to indicate agreement with the crowd. And basically what you've got in the media is them using social media feedback, you know, m you know a few character tweets or mm -hmm. tweets or whatever you want to call it, to, to set the, 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 the template for their news reporting rather than the other way around. In other words, in a sane world, you would have a news report and then you would have people on Twitter respond to it. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. But the tail is wagging the dog here. And basically the, 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 the mainstream media, the cable news networks, are taking their marching orders from Twitter, Facebook, and the like. And, and, and it's become nothing more than a popularity contest. And they think... The, that, that if you win a popularity contest, you're going to win an election. You understand what I'm getting at here? Absolutely. And so they take, they take a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and they put it together in a test tube in the hopes of convincing the nation at large, specifically the silent majority, Ted, us in other words, that we are a vast minority and that we need not bother going to the polls. We need not discuss our politics, our outlooks, our values with anybody else, because we represent such an infinitesimal minority that our opinion really doesn't matter, and that the lion's share of the population of this country ascribes to socialism. And that's what they're abdicating now. Let's, let's, let's not mince words here. They're abdicating socialism. Look at their candidates. Mm -hmm. Look at Ocasio-Cortez, we talked about in the last show. Look at Gillum here in Florida. Look at, look at Bernie Sanders. Look at this attempt to mainstream out-and-out socialism, not to mention war in the streets, not to mention race baiting, not to mention turning gender against gender, see me too. And, and, and Black Lives Matter for the other component. Uh, the bottom line is, is they want to roil this nation in such a way that we become dispirited. And I don't believe as long as we have Donald Trump as our commander-in-chief that that is humanly possible. I agree. We have, we have to guard this, this democracy. We have to guard our republic, and people need to understand that this is a, a, a representative republic, and those that are trying to bring socialism to us are um, are not students of history, that's for sure, because there's not one place where they can say that it works. 
Um, it really doesn't. It always leads to a, a terrible, terrible ending. And I think of the killing fields in, in, in Cambodia. I think of what happened in Vietnam and what happened throughout Southeast Asia because of this. And you think of what, what's happening right now, right now under our very nose, which uh, it's funny that the news media, it's not really, uh, the mainstream media is not really covered, is the, the two million people that are fleeing Venezuela right now, where they had a very strong economy, a very oil-producing, strong, good economy, and they socialized it because of a socialist president and a socialist government. And within a few years, it's absolutely destroyed it. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and again, it goes back to our leadership. Trump had the boldness. He was the first leader of our nation that had the courage to reference Venezuela specifically as an example of yes, the fallout of socialism yeah. at the U.N. last week. We have put the, that U.N. speech on our, our radio show. We're going to try to... One of the things that uh, what's great about this station is we're able to uh, be able to bring some of the uh, news that's going on. Uh, we try to stay up to date with it, and in the future, uh, with the with the Bergman report coming at us, so whenever important topics come on, this will make us very up to date of what's going on. And uh, Aaron, you got you got. Uh, some exciting stuff to tell us in the future, but let's carry on our conversation. We were talking about also uh, one of the things we wanted to mention, of course, is uh, we're talking about this deluge that we're having against us, this bombardment. And, uh, Absolutely. Tell us Absolutely. about that. Well, it's born of narcissism, Ted. This is what we, we can never allow ourselves to lose sight of, okay? In addition to being ignorant, foolish, and deranged, these people are also incredibly narcissistic, and they're bullies. And I find it ironic that they're always accusing us of what they are, of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, Remember all the anti-bullying campaigns <laughs> a few years back? Oh, yeah. I mean, these people are the ultimate bullies. Look at the Kavanaugh hearings. I mm -hmm. mean, look at, look at their tactics. Look at Antifa. Look at Black Lives Matter, look at me too. This is classic bullying behavior, okay? And it's born of narcissism, i.e., I am right, you are wrong, and because you are wrong, and I am so firmly convinced you are wrong, you have no right to state your mind. That is the mindset we are up against here, okay? Mm -hmm. And they are not attempting to convince us of anything. They are attempting to intimidate us through sheer brute force. And I think I liken it to a blowfish, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't think they have the numbers that they purport to have, thus the title of our show, right? Yep. The false majority. And I believe that they are puffing themselves up using social media bots and using so-called public opinion polls and fake polls such as Andrew Gillum <laughs> leading DeSantis by six points in the state of Florida. Does anybody believe that's a legitimate poll? Absolutely not. Of course not. They came up with it an hour after the, the, the primaries were over, okay? <laughs> these, these polls are meant not to reflect public opinion, but to attempt to move it, to dispirit and depress turnout. We know this for a fact. We've seen it for years, Okay. But understanding that all of this is not only born, again, of ignorance, stupidity, derangement, but most importantly, narcissism. I am right, and I don't have to listen to your position because I am right. In fact, you don't even have a right to state your position. And I'm, I'm reminded again, to use a movie analogy, if you'll indulge me, there's a film called Deconstructing Harry. It's, an, it's a Woody Allen film. Mm -hmm. And it's a series of vignettes. And in one vignette, the late Robin Williams plays an actor. And he's shooting a movie somewhere, and the director notices that he's out of focus. Not that the camera's out of focus, but that the actor is out of focus. He's fuzzy, okay? <laughs> and, they, and no matter how they adjust the camera, they can't get him in focus. So, you know, it's very embarrassing and all this. And, and Robin Williams and his family go to the doctor, 
and the doctor says, well, I don't know what to tell you, but you're, you're, you're fuzzy. You're out of focus. And in the picture, of course, he's all blurry, right? You know, <laughs> I just feel blurry. I don't feel like myself. So the doctor says, well, I have the perfect antidote. And he, gra- he reaches into a box and he pulls out these glasses, which he issues to Robin Williams' family, which makes their focus out of focus so that he looks better. <laughs> and so they're expected to live the rest of their lives wearing these glasses that distort reality so that he'll be comfortable. And perfect. that, to me, is the perfect metaphor for the, for the mentality we're dealing with in this effort to sell us a bill of goods that we, despite having elected Donald Trump in what is basically an electoral wipeout, Okay, uh, in the mm-hmm. Electoral College, it was a wipeout. And I guarantee you, in addition to that, that if you did away with all the illegal alien votes that were counted in California, New York, and Illinois, he won the popular vote, too. I guarantee it. Yes, that, indeed. That said, in spite of all that empirical evidence, these people want to sell us that we are in the minority. And not just in the minority, Ted, but in the vast minority. Mm. And we've got to resist that at all costs. And the bottom line is, is you and I and probably a great many of your listeners, not to mention your many contributors to, to the last patrol radio show, are all acutely aware by now of this. But I'm talking about the grandmothers, the grandfathers, the, the senior citizens, the, the, the people that don't necessarily follow politics, you know, the horse race aspect Mm -hmm. of it on a day-in, day-out basis, they have to be made aware of the fact that there is an active effort to disparate and demoralize them that is as insidious as anything we have seen heretofore in the media. Very well put. One of the things we, we were looking at also, when you mentioned about the people, one of the things we're seeing is the bullying of people and how that affect uh, when they start yelling, well, you can't bully people, you can't bully people, but they're doing it themselves. The left is bullying uh, leadership, the weak leadership of industry to to pull out of certain things. And, and if you would, expand upon that a little bit. The bullying of the well, weak leadership of industry, how they're being, cow- how there they are being cowardly, uh, responding to the left well let me let me borrow a phrase from a book i'm reading there's there's a great book out there by the way that all your listeners i think would enjoy uh particularly the sports fans among them it's called republicans buy sneakers too by clay travis and it just (laughs) came out about a week ago it's already despite the best efforts of a lot of people hitting the best seller list Mm -hmm. um whether the New York Times will report this as the case is it or not remains to be seen. But I, I sent you a picture of the cover of the book, uh, which, of course, was a, a photograph of Donald Trump wearing a pair of Air Jordans and his trademark red tie dunking a basketball on Colin Kaepernick. And uh, <laughs> that kind of tells you, you know, the, the subtext of the book is how the left is ruining sports with politics. Now, that said, I've given Mr. Travis his citation here. Uh, but on page 88, he makes reference to a fascinating uh, scenario that's a local story here in Florida. Mm-hmm. Following the Parkland shooting um, at a high school in South Florida, Parkland, Florida, 17 people were killed and social media was in an uproar. The uproar spread so quickly that many companies felt compelled to get involved, even those who had nothing to do with the shooting or gun control. One example of that, Delta Airlines. Delta gave a travel discount to members of the NRA who fly on its airplanes. The most recent discount had been used by 13 people to travel to the NRA's annual meeting in Texas. Let's presume that discount, which couldn't have amounted to much, led to Delta taking $200 off the listed airfare for each of those customers. That's probably too high, but let's presume it cost Delta a grand total of $2,600 off the normal rate. In the wake of the school shooting, Delta probably fielded a couple of media inquiries about the shooting uh, and the NRA discount. And Mm -hmm. it's likely that far left wingers on social media and the blog of Spear Circuit started to speak out about the airline discount and asked why it existed. 
fearful of the stories that might emerge and the existing social media blowback in the wake of the school shooting, Delta panicked and said it would no longer provide any discount to NRA members. The backlash to Delta's decision was immediate and substantial. Republican politicians in Georgia, Delta's home state, removed a tax subsidy that would have saved the airline $50 million, wow. all because Delta felt compelled to weigh in on a contentious political issue. If I were a Delta shareholder, I'd be furious. Now, there's a classic example of what we're talking about. Cowardly leadership, or in some cases, corporate leadership that's also of the same mindset of these leftist groups are willing to immediately jump on the bandwagon every time one of these issues comes up and put the, the stockholders' investment at risk this way, and invariably it leads to backlash, Ted. Um, this is, as you put it, a form of bullying, that's a, a tactic that has also permeated the private sector. And the horror of it is, is it's a not so thinly veiled uh, attempt to abridge free speech. In other words, you can't speak freely in the workplace anymore. And that is the objective, particularly if your leanings are conservative, of course. If your leanings are leftward, you can say pretty much anything you want, anytime you want. And therein lies the rub. And that takes us full circle to that notion of we are the majority, you are the minority, ipso facto, your, your opinion doesn't matter. What was the uh, follow-up, or do you have any follow-up information on what happened to Delta after that? Did they, no. Did they re no, it, I wonder it was if they an anecdotal example, uh, yeah. uh, one of many uh, that I could cite. I was just curious. I will be looking into that and find out, because for many, many years I've been an NRA law enforcement firearms instructor, where I was trained and certified nationally by them to teach police and uh, also teach security. And I'd be very interested to see, and I'm going to try to find out from, from, from them, has that ever been reinstated? If not, I am sure that $50 million in tax uh, is, is going to really come back and bite those shareholders, and they're not going to like that one bit at all. Aaron, also we were talking about the... Uh, the bullying of, of, of weak leadership, not only we're seeing that, but we're seeing not just an industry itself, but we're seeing all kinds of phases where people, uh, even in uh, the innocent folks that are being bullied and have strong leadership, for instance, the, the, the baker that, wanted, that refused to bake a cake because of the religious convictions. The restaurant that refused to, to do uh, certain things because of their convictions. Uh, we're seeing where the left will turn against them, the little mom-pa operation, and try to completely destroy them. And talk about super bullying, or bullying, uh, that is just um, right there is such a hypocrite of, of what's going on. It is just... Um, I, I imagine if, if, I had a, if I had a business... Again, which, you know, and I was not, if I just chose that I was not going to provide services, security services for a certain event, um, and they were to turn against me, I can see where just that pressure could destroy a company, or just like with Kavanaugh, you know, destroy your reputation for all the years. I really, um, I really see where, where this has gone very astray, and where this false idea of uh, that we are a major a minority and that the majority of people feel this way against something, boy, that's got to be confronted right away. That's got to be confronted with facts and truth, and it's got to be. We've got to stand up strong. We got to stand up strong against this type of tactic. It's um, it's a ploy. It's a deception. And it's a deception that can be very uh, detrimental to not only people's livelihoods, but also their health and their safety. Well, you're absolutely right. You know, I, I shudder every time I think of the billions, if not trillions, of wasted man hours on issues such as this. I'm talking about, 
you know, the whole sexual harassment mm -hmm. racket. I'm talking about the, the Americans with Disability Act rackets. Um, I'm talking about the great offended, uh, all the time wasted on these investigations, all these craze, these craven, excuse me, mm -hmm. um, HR regulations and training. I mean, you know, I, I, I work remotely, Ted. I'll give you a classic example. I work remotely for, you know, a number of nationwide investigative companies. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you know that uh, all, of my, all of my clients have uh, insisted that I undergo these modules, these, uh, these online courses in sexual harassment, mm -hmm. even though I work out of my home? And... I look at these things, and, and they take about, you know, 30, 40 minutes to complete. I mean, it's not a huge time investment, but you think about the resources and hours and time that went into the production of them, and you ask yourself, who is profiting from this, mm -hmm. you know? And you look at the absolute insipid nature of, and, and what they try to do is claim that everything is offensive, Okay. You know, a, a guy makes an honest mistake uh, in one of the little vignettes because they make these embarrassing little vignette videos. And, you know, a fella says, oh, you know, uh, my, 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 uh, my partner is waiting for me in the car. And he goes, oh, why don't you bring her up? One of the employees says, why don't you bring her up so we can meet her? And, of course, it's a man, and the guy is gay. And this is supposed to be a major faux pas on the part of the co-worker. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It, in other words, they have they have made an industry out of the offended, in addition to, as we talked about in the earlier show, incentivizing victimhood. And that is where we've got to draw the line. And that's the beauty of Trump. But again, we talked about the finite um, reservoir of patience that the public has for this kind of stuff. We only have, at best, another six years of Trump. Okay, and Trump mm -hmm. has the courage to stand up to this. We need leadership beyond Trump that's also willing to draw the line and put a stop to this. And I'm talking about all these programs. They have to be stopped. This has become a major cottage industry, the great offended. And again, it's used to convince us that with our belief system, our morals, our values, we are in the vast minority. And we can't allow this to happen anymore. No, and we sadly, when you talk about weak leadership, my mind immediately rolls to the Republican Party. Yes. Okay. Okay, and, we're gonna uh, have you hold that thought on the weak leadership in the Republican Party, and stand by, ladies and gentlemen. We have a station identification. This is Aaron Bergman with the Bergman Report. Thank you for listening to VRM, Veterans Radio Ministry, from VRM Digital Broadcast Studios in Zephyr Hills, Florida, USA. Christian Talk, Variety Talk Radio. Welcome back to the Last Patrol Radio Show. We're speaking with, of course, with Aaron Bergman and the Bergman Report. And uh, the title of our show today is The False Majority. Aaron, we were talking about what we were worried about with the weak leadership of the Republican Party that we need to be uh, attuned to, especially in the future. So go ahead, Aaron. Exactly. We, we, just, we, we need better representatives that are more on a par with Trump. I mean, do you realize that, again, Trump is doing three rallies this week in addition to running the country. He's going to do three rallies up until November, from what I understand, in various states, and he is, he, is, he is hitting the regional elections, and he is nationalizing regional elections, which is a, it's a winning formula. And the Republican Party needs to get on board and get behind him. There were 120,000 people at some small little podunk town in Tennessee the other night wanting to see him, okay? Now, that is reality, Ted. Mm -hmm. That is not the funhouse mirror that the media is trying to hold up to us and sell us this false reality that everybody in the country hates Trump and hates the Trump agenda by extension. My point is, is that in our day-to-day, -day, beyond politics even, we need to communicate with people in our lives to let them know, to assure them 
that what they're seeing, what they're hearing over the airwaves is not reality, that it's a distorted reality. You know, I remember when I was living in California, and I, before I moved to Florida, Ted, I bought into a lot of this because I was viewing things through that prism, mm-hmm. as it were. In other words, I was in the minority there. No question about it, okay? But, and, and that gives you a particular perspective of the world at large. You think that the whole country, that, that California is representative of the country at large. And you and I both know that nothing could be further than the <laughs> truth. True. Right? <laughs> true. Very true. But, but I think that as conservatives and as pastor on your part, as a person out in the world on my part, as individuals, as citizens, I think we owe it to ourselves and to our neighbors to assist in communicating these falsehoods. In other words, the the, the sale of, of this false reality that's going to be going on for as long as I can see in the future. Irrespective of what happens in November, this is not going to change, Ted. We are never going no. to change these people. We're never going to change their hearts, their minds. The media is never going to change. And I believe that their motivation is economic, as we talked about, at great length. Okay? I think there are, there are huge backdoor subsidy programs in place that these failing media outlets are petrified are going to get the plug pulled after November. I speak of the Ad Council and mm-hmm. VR, just to name a few. That's an interesting story. We need to talk about that in the future. I'd like to to talk about the NPR and, and the different things like this, that how the government uh, had supported NPR all these years. And um, I had a part-time job one time doing a master control panel for a, a NPR television and radio uh, station at a university. And I would like to someday I'll talk to you about that and how interesting that was. Uh, but now we have important things that we need to take a look at also. November is an important date coming up. We need to uh, we need to really make sure that we vote and get out the vote for the conservative mindset, for the conservative beliefs. It is so important that we do this. And Aaron... I I and I'm glad that the president is is taking taking this project on of the midterms which we had discussed in earlier shows that uh, he's the first president to really do this. And when you think of people say well he's it's it's going to change it's 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 uh, it's still going to be the same he's going to lose one or the other or maybe both. I hear that and something starts ringing in my ear or in my inside me saying you know there's um I wouldn't be too sure about this, folks. He stood up with 17 other people on the same stage, and nobody said he had a chance, including the Republicans, including you know 90% of the people uh, that were in politics saying, no, no, this is not going to happen. And guess what? Each one of them fell. Each time they got smaller and smaller and ended up with him against Hillary, and that also. I really feel that... Um, uh, the people are going to, again, and I look forward to it, and I don't want to be too um, pessimistic or optimistic because I know one thing that's important, and that is we got to vote. we got to get out there and vote. we got to get our base and those that are that really enjoy having more money in their paycheck and enjoy seeing this country being great again. We've got to reach the people that are really, truly, in their hearts, seeing the difference. And seeing that America is, is is changed for the better, and we don't want it to fall back into where it was. Exactly. In other words, what you're speaking of is reality, the tangible benefits of the past two years that will be ripped away if 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 you know a, a doomsday scenario presents in the upcoming midterms. And you've got the reality that people are living day in day out. Versus again, I go back to the distorted reality that they're attempting to sell us, telling us that this is terrible and it needs to be undone. Again, it's like the Robin Williams example with the glasses. Mm -hmm. They want us all to put on those glasses 
and see reality in a distorted way so that we'll vote that way. Now, we left the Republicans off a little bit easy, so we've got to revisit this. Because yes, please do. This is our biggest obstacle. In other words, when you're trying to inspire people to get out and vote, invariably what you're going to hear, like you point out, is what's the difference. The Republicans never do anything. We give them power, and they refuse to use it. They sit there like placated cows and allow the Democrats to run the show, even when we send them there. So what difference does it make, right? right. And you look at the fact that our national debt has gone up since the Republicans uh, took charge of everything along with Trump because they, they forced that horrendous six-month budget under Ryan on his way out the door down mm-hmm. our throats, mm-hmm. right? Yep. So we our budget went up. Our deficit went up a trillion dollars. Okay, I don't dispute that, and I don't dispute that the Republican Party, as it has been presently constituted leading up into these midterms, is failing. Okay, but the bottom line is, is a lot of the failing elements are starting to drop out like flies. Yes. Paul Ryan. I give you this Jeff Flake idiot from Arizona. I give you Corker from Tennessee. Yep. The rhinos are starting to jump ship. And this, this is a good thing. This is what people have to understand. And when they go to the polls to vote Republican down the ticket, they are not voting for this cast of characters. They're voting for Trump again. And they are shoving it down the throats of the media again. And I believe that 2016 is a day you know, that people would like to relive. Watching MSNBC, CNN, you know, doing their victory lap at 6 p.m. on Election Eve. Mm-hmm. Remember that? Yes. And watching their faces fall as the night wore on and the Rust Belt state started to come in for Trump, Trump, Trump after Florida. Yep. I think people want to revisit that, especially after being tortured for two years mm-hmm. after that point by this daily bombardment, you see. So here's the thing. Here's the upshot of this. Voting Republican, believe it or not, may be the last thing in the world that some of the present establishment Republicans want, because they would love, I believe, more than anything else to be in the minority, collect their compensation packages, the same amount, the same staff sizes, the same insiders trading opportunities, and to enrich themselves, but but no accountability, okay? So... If, if you want to hold these people's feet to the fire, and if you really want to ruin their day, vote for them. So if you're disappointed in the Republican Party and its performance and its complete unwillingness to back our president, the worst thing you can do to strike back is vote for them. We have a, a situation also where we're, we're seeing these these folks are, are that are running are actually turning to Trump because they're seeing that Hey, he does have coattails, and they're not coattails. They're, it's a ski rope. You know, if you get on the ski rope and you got got your skis, uh, he's going to pull you right along. And even if you don't have your skis and you don't know how to barefoot, he's going that fast and that powerful that he'll pull you along. Uh, those that are going against him, thank God, they're dropping off. Exactly. What, what a and swamp. remember this too. Yeah. Um, I, I love it when liberals try to call themselves progressives. Yes. I mean, you talk about a non sequitur, right? There. That, that is insanity. They are the furthest thing from progressive. They are retrograde. Lest hmm. we forget, and as case in point of what I'm saying, if, God forbid, they win the House, you know who the next Speaker of the House is going to be? <laughs> Nancy. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Say it, say it loud and proud. I don't want to say it. I don't want to, I, uh, Nancy Pelosi. Uh, yes. Okay? <laughs> that is not progressive. That is retrograde. That is back to 2006. No, that's back to 1966. Sorry. Well, no. The last time <laughs> the, the, the I don't, was 2006. No, I'm saying the ideology the, of, of, no, of, the, of that movement, the San Francisco movement. Yeah, but you've got you've got two schools of thought here. Mm-hmm. You have one that wants to take us forward, yeah. and you have one that wants to drag us back into the dark ages. They Absolutely. are retrograde. They are the furthest thing imaginable from the term progressive. And like I say, they always accuse us of what they're doing. 
not to mention the fact that, you know, down is up, up is down, down is black is white, white is black. Everything is backwards with these people. Mm -hmm. Everything is distorted like a funhouse mirror, okay? (laughs) And the fact remains that this is a very simple decision come November. Do we want to continue on our present track? Republican, Democrat, Independent, I don't care. Do we want to continue on the trek we're on, or do we want to go back to 2006? It's as simple as that. And you don't even have to get into the politics of it. You just say, like you said, have you got more money in your paycheck? Are you doing better? Do you have more options? Right? Are your taxes lower? Do you, do you, do you have upward mobility? Mm-hmm. Do you want to go back? And 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 I think... It's a very distinct possibility that these Kavanaugh hearings may have roused people from their slumbers because there's just there's just a natural inclination toward um, you know being comfortable when your guy wins in the presidential election. That's why this has always been the case. We have always seen, you know, in the ensuing midterm that the president loses one of the bodies of Congress. But I don't. I, I think Trump, we, I think we owe it to Trump. Everything that he's accomplished, in spite of all the odds, in spite of everybody against him, we owe it to him to, to, to have his back and maintain the House and Senate, not for the Republicans, but for him. Mm-hmm. I, agree. I agree. And it really is that simple. And, and to continue the, 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 the country, I mean, on him, we're, we're, we're basically at full employment after two years. And people, I think, understand that if we fritter away this opportunity, that all this progress will not only be halted in its tracks, but will, so they will start to reverse this. And I think it's the last thing in the world that the true majority, the real majority, wants. This is a very exciting time that we're living in, and some important decisions have got to be made. We're seeing such progress and things that that uh, that are incredible to see this turnaround in two years. When you think of all the pro- the progress of returning factories, opening new factories, returning steel steel uh, U.S. steel, opening new plants, a uh, car industry coming back. You see these things that are happening, and it's because of doing away with all the restrictions and regulations that have bogged down our industry in our in our country. Also, the tax breaks and the, and the tax incentives for the workers, seeing their salaries come up, and seeing seeing the money coming back from offshore accounts back to reinvest in America. We're seeing NAFTA what happened there, which. Uh, to get rid of that and start the new uh, the new agreement between Mexico, Canada, and the USA. To see these things being so uh, to happen, to see China finally, China's realizing that, you know what, uh, maybe this is going to affect us worse than we thought. And seeing the people of China are not too happy with their current leader or what's happening because this could turn everything on a dime for them. Also, the other things on the military aspect, building our military up. I know it was depleted. I know it was wore out. I know our people in the military were wore out. And seeing this being infused with new resources, being able to pay our military what they deserve, these are things that are all positive things for our country. And on the side note, something that's kind of dear to my heart a little bit besides the military is seeing America once again take the lead in being what we are best at, and that's explorers. America has always been the top explorers. We were the first to land a man on the moon. And we were, we have done incredible things when it comes to research. And people say, oh, what good is the space program done, done for us as they're speaking and playing with their cell phone? Hello, folks. We have a lot of things that this country can do for the best. One of the things also that has happened, which would probably have never happened, I, I say would have never happened under the other leadership, and that was being able to 
to give folks a choice that they, if they're dying of a, of a of a ailment, that they will have a chance to try some of the new uh, drugs that are out there to help cure. We have we are going in the right direction, folks. We are going in the right direction, and we need to keep going in that direction, or else we're going to fail. And we're going and none of and nobody can tell me that this country is going in the wrong direction now because it's not. The people are are waking up, they're realizing it, and I hope that this word is spread. Aaron, we're getting close to time that we're going to wrap it up, but you got about about three or four minutes before we wrap it up. Go ahead, Aaron. Tell us what's on your mind. Central themes, perception versus reality. And essentially, uh, when Obama was running for re-election, in 2011, 2012, um, one thing that 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 came up often on uh, Rush Limbaugh's show is he would talk about how when they would poll people, they would say, "Well, you know, I'm doing okay." But oh, actually, this was 2008. This was when Obama was first running after eight years of Bush, and mm-hmm. and people would say, "Well, I'm doing okay, but I I gather my neighbor's not doing okay because the evening news says so." In other words, there are people suffering out mm-hmm. there. That, mm-hmm. that is the stock and trade of the Democrat Party, suffering and, and selling victimhood. That's basically their stock and trade, let's be honest. And the bottom line is, is that people may not be necessarily completely aware of all the great things you just pointed out. Okay, let's say people in in the retired population, for example, that aren't in the workforce, that aren't seeing these positive changes firsthand because they're not in the workforce any longer. And all they're seeing is what they see on their TV screen every night about how dreadful things are. Things are great. You know, the bottom line is, is the Democrat Party has nothing to run on except hatred. Okay, except division, except fake news fake polls, and demoralization. They have no message, in other words. Their only message is a message of hatred and resentment and bitterness. And the bottom line is, is we need to steel ourselves against that. But more importantly, we have to make it clear to those of us that don't follow these things the way you and I and probably the vast majority of your listeners do, to the fact that that they are being fed a false reality. They're being sell- sold a distorted funhouse image of America by the media that they need to dismiss out of hand. And I, that goes double for any polls that come out. Nobody should pay any attention to any polls. They're useless, as was proven two years ago when we were told that Hillary had a 92% chance of beating Trump in the general two days out from the election. Well said, well said, Aaron. Thanks again for your insight, your information, and your time. And we're looking forward to uh, to helping you produce that the radio show, The Bergman Report. And, of course, you're always welcome on our show, The Last Patrol Radio Show. Aaron, thank you again, my friend. It's been great. It's been a, a busy day. And uh, we'll be talking to you soon. Thank you, Ted. I'll look forward to it. The Last Patrol Radio Show is a production of VRM, Veterans Radio Ministry. It's a ministry of Great Hope Christian Fellowship Church in Tampa, Florida, also partnering with Trinity Church of Wesley Chapel, Florida. The Last Patrol Radio Show is is broadcast from uh, Veterans Radio Ministries Digital Broadcast Studios, WVRM. And we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast. Zephyr Hills, Florida, USA. This is Christian Talk Variety Radio, and WVRM is happy to be the flag station for the Last Patrol radio show. If you want to listen to us, uh, please pass this information along to your friends and your family and veterans and all patriots out there. It's very simple to listen to this show. You can go to your uh, go to the website veteransradioministry.com. Again, that's VeteransRadioMinistry.com, and you'll see the Listen Live button there, uh, Live 365. Click on that button, and then the second click onto the show, and you'll be listening to the show live. 365, seven days a week, 
and we hope you enjoy the show. And do me a favor. Let your friends know about this. Spread this on. Once you get to our website, our Veterans Radio Ministry website, if you would, please share it with your friends on the Facebook and on email. Whatever you can do, help spread the word of the truth and the life of Jesus Christ and the good news that's spoken here on VRM Veterans Radio Ministry.